Thanks very much, Dimitri. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, here to talk about our uh, token ecosystem creation framework, which we have published. And we have a paper version. I have a couple. I don't have one for everyone, but uh, if you're lucky, you can get one in, uh, one in the back. Um, this uh, is uh, something that we have produced with uh, contributors um, uh, over uh, almost one and a half years. Um, contributors from Imperial College, who we work with, um, Zargon from Blockchain, a great contributor. I'm uh, thankful to Trent, to Dimi as well, and several others who have contributed, who have reviewed, uh, which has resulted in this, uh, in this work. Um, just a quick word on uh, who we are, Outlier Ventures. Um, we uh, were established 2014. We're a lead investor and advisor on uh, next generation um, protocols in what we call uh, convergence. So it's where distributed ledgers come together with uh, things like AI, Internet of Things, robotics, where we believe there will be a green field of new economies that uh, will, uh, will grow from here. Some of our investments um, are over there. Um, we uh, have a really uh, intensive approach with our uh, portfolio, so we're very much a hands-on uh, venture platform, venture uh, capitalist. Not, uh, we, we don't uh, exactly sit and wait, so we participate, we, we design with our teams, we, on the technical uh, side, we, we build on the networks. Um, we built out our capacity in, uh, in all of these areas, so token design, regulation, technology, marketing, the community building. Um, and also, yeah, strongly research-driven and thesis-driven uh, organization. Um, now, from all uh, that, um, um, yeah, well, this is a bit of the, the where we come from. I mean, I, I guess you, you guys share the view that the future is not these organizations. Um, and we believe there's a great opportunity in uh, the centralized technologies to, uh, um, to this create a new uh, new ways of working together, a new ways of value exchange, value creation. Um, so it is a big socio uh, economic experiment. This 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 cryptocurrency uh, business, the well, what has started with cryptocurrency and blockchain and grown out to much more advanced forms of uh, token uh, creation, token uh, design. Um, and well, we believe it's uh, possibly the largest uh, socio economic uh, change that uh, that we have seen up to now. Um, and that's that's why we are in the space and uh, and not in other spaces. It's uh, something that excites us all very much, myself included. Um, and yeah, tokens are at the core of that as incentive systems um, to be able to mass coordinate the centralization of the web, to go from those tech giants who go from uh, platform monopolies to data monopolies to AI monopolies uh, to take that away and further cut it up and have uh, more people, more organizations participate in those value streams rather than have them concentrate in one single entity alone. Um, so um, we we did that, and we're doing that with you know all of our portfolio over time, um, and uh, from that followed a lot of insights, and we saw that what what worked in the Web 2.0 age, um, the frameworks, the lean startup, and everything. Principles of that apply to token ecosystem design, but they don't directly translate. And there are no tools for token ecosystem design yet. No, no ready-made ones. And so from basically our, our project work, the down in the trenches, sometimes messy, sometimes more polished, from everything that we saw going around the space, from the contributions that we had, we uh, have tried to distill that into this framework. Um, and I will uh, go through some of the tools of it, the overall, the overarching uh, uh, line of it, and um, uh, yeah. So, and and any deeper dive that you want to take into it uh, is uh, well, you can you can read it on paper, and you can read it uh, definitely online. Um, so, first, as a token design process, what do you need? Um, this is a very uh, diverse discipline. You can't solve this with technologists alone. You can't solve this with economists alone. You can't solve this with data scientists alone. You need all of them. So you need a very diverse set of capacities. Um, systems engineering, I mean, the, the, the things that we've, we've heard about today before um, in the various presentations, all of those things need to be present in your, uh, in your token uh, design, token engineering team. Um, it's one of the first things that we, we 
often need to make our portfolio aware of, like, okay, have you thought about all of these things? You need them in-house or at least close to uh, your house because they're all important. Now, the overall structure of the process is what we call the three Ds of token design. So it's discovery, design, and deployment. Uh, discovery is mostly, mostly, mostly focused on getting the problem right, knowing what's there to be solved, knowing who's there, um, what possibilities are there, not jumping to solutions yet. Now, design is when you do jump to solutions, but you do that highly iteratively, highly um, insight-driven, testing-driven, going from a more uh, a high level view, deeper and deeper into something more specific, something more mathematically um, supported. And finally, the deployment phase basically ranges from I have a model that has been validated, that has been tested, now I'm going to implement it, now I'm going to actually write Solidity code or whatever I use. Um, I'm going to deploy a testnet, I'm going to get input from users, I'm going to all, all the whole cycle. And the deployment phase effectively um, continues as long as the system exists. So the discovery phase is really um, uh, aimed at getting the problem right. And you can't do that perfectly, um, but you can do it a lot better than uh, what we have seen uh, some projects out there uh, do it. Um, it. Doing this in a structured way is, uh, is really important. Now one approach to, to uh, cut up the problem um, is uh, this one of the tools in the framework, the logic tree, um, is where you go to uh, mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive, uh, out deepening and cutting up of your, uh, the various parts of your problem in iterative fashion. Um, some of the other uh, key tools, sometimes this picks it up and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, yes. Um, oh no, let me establish it first. Uh, well, basically, Zargam, this morning, I, I am thankful you have already described this, but as an overview of the, the value stack in, in, uh, in a, a token economy, uh, token ecosystem. Um, it's important to look at all of these dimensions, so not just the economic one. There is social value, that is value in technology, that is value in the physical world, um, and these can all accrue on these various levels, um, uh, all the way down to uh, the ledger uh, that, that uh, offers the durable data and that everything is built on. Uh, on top of that, there comes trusted computation, which offer more functionality or more possibilities. You can look at interaction uh, patterns, and at each of these levels you can see um, uh, increasing levels of, uh, of value uh, accruing. Now, some other key tools in this phase uh, beyond the, the logic tree is a problem statement worksheet um, and our own version of token utility canvas. We look at, um, we take the, the stakeholders in your system, uh, do a good review of, okay, who do I see in this space? And very importantly, their possible value interactions. So, okay, there are, um, uh, there are uh, people in my system that, in my, that I foresee that might, uh, might offer data, might offer services, might offer certain um, capacities, and there are people that consume, can consume them. And up front, I'm going to sit down and see, OK, what, uh, what behaviors would we like them to have, and what behaviors would we not like them to have. Now, all of these um, are very important to go over in an iterative fashion, because you're not going to get them uh, right in one time and possibly something over there will uh, give you a new insight on, on something over there like hey we actually forgot this part of the of the problem but ultimately this um, should result in uh, you know a good overview almost as a requirement specification of what am I going to build what am I going to solve um, is that the overall three or okay yeah, okay, sure. Um, so design phase um, is uh, really going from that specification to a uh, uh, model solution. So we're not writing code here yet. We're applying tooling. We're, pl we're doing all the things that, that Zargam told you about and several others. We're doing on a, st a statistical level, running simulations um, and applying uh, the algorithms to get it on a model level, get it right. Um, Network objective function is an important one there to uh, try to mathematically capture that what you want to achieve with your uh, with your system. Um, 
for example, the, the, the best known one in Bitcoin objective function is maximize the number of hashes, but uh, you, know, you need to mathematically define what is the mathematical uh, objective function of my new uh, token ecosystem. And again, you need to iterate because you're not gonna get it right um, at once. Um, uh, well, the concept of token network fit um, is, I think, uh, I saw na the nice connection with uh, Aparna this, this morning, like this review of ledger technologies um, on the baseline. You need to see, okay, th this thing that I'm gonna do, what, what capacities do I need in my ledger? Do I even need millions of transactions per second? Or do I need high data capacity? Or do I need um, quick finality? Um, it's important to choose those lower level technologies and um, evaluate them. Um, two key tools there, Javelin board, going into more detailed and more detailed and more detailed ways of describing this. So starting with surveys, which are more written form, going to experiments, to simulations, to the, the A-B tests of testing different forms of the models of the entire system. Um, and, uh, and taxonomy of actors, where you look at the various actors, the values that they can interact, and going there on a deeper level, really defining this on a, on a mathematical level as opposed to the earlier stages. Now, this is the point where I have a nicely specified and validated model, and I can start to build, yay. Um, so the deployment starts where, the, where you start to code, where um, you start to translate those models into uh, real world functionality, um, and gradually move in towards uh, your testnet deployments, and uh, have many, many feedback loops. Um, because it's under, often under, underestimated that, you know, the like in uh, the more traditional design, uh, design in your ivory tower, and then, oh yeah, there was a real world, things are different. Um, keeping this feedback loop and having space for this feedback loop and changes is incredibly important for these uh, token, uh, token ecosystems. Um, so now I have minus one minute. <laughs> I'll rush a bit through it, but um, one uh, important concept there is what we see as the path to utility. So um, the, the model that you'll design of your system is probably pretty complex. Um, you think it will work that way, you think it will, it will be usable in that way. Um, but to take into account the, the actual experience, the actual, um, well, the real life verification of is it actually useful, um, you, you take into account those feedback loops, you develop iterative versions, and you start to deploy your first, uh, what we call minimal viable utility, so minimal viable version of your, your tokenized system in order to get feedback as early as, um, as possible. And you continue to do that. And that's why, for example, uh, on, on rigidly unchangeable systems or ha hard to change systems like, uh, like for example, Bitcoin are very ch challenging because there it's the, the feedback loop there might ch take five years, right? So how is the system going to adapt? How is it going to evolve? Well, quite likely it, uh, it won't very much. Um, and the optimization function there, um, yeah, it, it continues for uh, as long as basically the, the network lives. And uh, something we stress in, in this approach is there's a need to have uh, a network health dashboard to um, uh, really see the importance, the, the, the key indicators for your network. So uh, of course there's the, there's the Let's say the common ones like how many, uh, how fast are my blocks, how many transactions, yada yada yada. But th those are all low level. So if uh, if I'm, uh, for example, Ocean Protocol, uh, it's all about sharing data. So my indicators are maybe how many data sets have been produced today, how many uh, how many new stakers have been onboarded, how many, you know, how well does it all run? And it's important to have you know the the, the community aligned on those things. Because A, it determines, oh, we all find these things important, and maybe there's, there's one missing, and I'll suggest another one. And hey, we see that it doesn't work because this one goes down all the time. We need to fix that as a, that as a collective. Um, now, finally, to close off, towards uh, governance. Um, of course, it's easy to, to think about this if you know, you're a five-person uh, five team and you have control over all of this, and you can just, you know, uh, handle that alternate eternity and you, you release your new version and that's it. But this is about open systems, this is about decentralized systems. So in our view, um, all systems start centralized in some form because it was an idea of one person and then it was shared with another and um, you start to build uh, something. Um, 
but there's a pathway to decentralization, to decentralization. And you need to take that pathway into account explicitly in how you um, well, see the, the, the future of your, uh, of your system and of your organization. Um, it's not something that you can really leave to, well, well, you know, we'll just start to build it and we're going for two years and we'll see how to decentralize it then. Well, that doesn't really work. Uh, it's important to yeah, take it into account explicitly, like how, at what point are you going to do it and um, in what ways? Because there's you know, various ways in which you can increasingly um, open that up. Um, so again, taking the approach of starting minimally, minimally viable governance very early and then building it out, maybe you're going to you know, introduce a larger, very uh, uh, elaborate voting system. But I would not do that on day one because it's very likely to um, fail. So within the current system, like the new contenders over there on the top right, introducing decentralized uh, governance systems on chain, it's great that they do it. Um, I hope they, uh, they start small because otherwise uh, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in it. But uh, there's, um, there's great innovation going on. Um, so yeah, we, we see this as the new business model of, uh, of Web3. Um, tokenized ecosystems, they require um, both a bottom-up approach and a top-down approach. Uh, you can't just say, well, okay, we're, what are we going to deliver? Uh, what are the needs of user X and sit down and as a, as a persona lead startup and what are we going to offer them? Um, you need to design the entire economy. It's not just about designing this single service um, to, to, to your user group. It's about the whole uh, ecosystem together. Um, and that's why you need to also look from that uh, upper part, considering monetary policy, considering the uh, the yeah, the macroeconomics of your system um, and take that, uh, that helicopter view as well. Um, yeah, so that's why we felt that an innovation process toolbox was, uh, was necessary. Um, this is version one. There will definitely be a version two. Uh, we hope to, uh, to learn more from, uh, from you all and the, the wider uh, token engineering community. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron. We have time for one question, and somebody was prominent here. Uh, my question is very simple. Did you, did you try it out already, somehow? No, we just, you know, we just did it. No, uh, that, that, was the, that was the funny answer. But um, so we, we, let's say, we, we wrote the last letter to this in this form, um, let's say, two weeks ago. So no, it has not been uh, uh, gone from, from A all the way to Z um, with all those things. However, Parts of it we have definitely, uh, we have gone through and have been, you know, they're just what, what worked for us, we have written down. Um, parts are from the experience of others, um, taking uh, um, things that we saw from, from, from other projects that have worked well, that we saw maybe on, on individual occasions, like, for example, a network health, health dashboard from our portfolio, um, uh, only IOTA, the other don't, don't have a live token. So we can't really say all of our portfolio have a network health dashboard because they don't have a network yet live. Um, however, the concept of it is very useful and the, the, the places where we've seen it used in other, uh, other points and the, the, the feedback loops, um, that concept is important. So we have uh, incorporated that. So the answer is partially. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll have to move to the next talk, but uh, Aaron, yeah, you will I'll be, be around. around. Yeah. Ask me anything. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you.